Welcome back. Chapter 7. We're doing multiple ratio problems. And this is called mole stoichiometry. Page 111, 112, exercise 70. A couple of things to remember as always. First, never ever change the coefficients once your equation is balanced because you don't need to. The problem doesn't say anything about the ratio of reactants to products. It only tells you something about how much you started with or how much you're uh, trying to end up with. And so instead of changing the coefficients, you use the multiple ratio of the balanced equation to compare reactants to reactants, reactants to products, products to products or products to reactants. The multiple ratio within the balanced equation lets you go anywhere you need to go. Works great. Okay. So here's a typical reaction and what we're going to do is we're going to try four different problems different wordage the way we go about doing our work is exactly the same the key to everything is that mole to mole ratio of the balanced equation so write this down write each of these problems down hit pause give it your best go show all your work come back see if you got everything right pause all right, we're back. What's the very first thing you need to do? Always the same. Balance the chemical reaction. Make sure you're balanced. Because if it's not balanced, you can't compare anything. Okay, most complicated molecule. We're going to call it this one. Should be quick. If there's one of these, that means there's three calciums. Only place there's calciums here is three. If there's three CaCl2s, that means there's six chlorines. The only place there's chlorines is here, so that has to be a six. And if there's six of these, that means six sodiums. And the only way that will balance is if there's two of these to make six sodiums. And if that's right, you should have two phosphates. You have two phosphates, and we're balanced. Didn't take much time. Okay. For each one of these problems we have one number in the problem to start with always start with that one plus the moles plus the units but there's one other part to this you can't just say the units now because we're comparing different parts of this reaction so you need to write down the label on it too the molecule that we're talking about Okay, so we start with this many moles of calcium chloride. They want to know how many moles of sodium chloride. So what's the ratio? We're at moles. These coefficients say, literally, and I want you, when you see a balanced reaction, say to yourself, two moles of this stuff plus three moles of this stuff react to form one mole of this and six moles of that. All right, so if we're comparing for this problem, that two or the this re reactant with this product what goes on top what goes on bottom well you can't just say moles you have to say moles of calcium chloride goes on the bottom that's the only way that both of these cancel we want moles of sodium chloride at the top and what are those ratios well the ratio is six to three it comes straight off the mole to mole ratio that's the key to everything here okay so what's the results here well how many sig figs is in this ratio because it's a balanced equation it's exact it's an exact ratio okay so that makes it easier 4.9 has two sig figs, right? So what's 4.9 times 6 divided by 3? That's 9.8 moles of sodium chloride. We're done. That's it. That's all there is to it. Not too bad. Let's try the next one. This time, they give us the amount of product that's formed and they want to know how much of one of the reactants got used up. 
same deal. We start with one problem, or one value with its units and its label. And we say to ourselves, we need to compare calcium phosphate with sodium phosphate. That's that ratio. So what number goes on top, what number goes on bottom? Well, in order to get the units canceling, moles of uh, calcium phosphate go on the bottom. The moles of what we want, sodium phosphate, go on the top. Is it a pain to write these out? I sure it is. I'm going to give you enough time to do it. And if you don't, it's real easy to mix up these two numbers. The one goes with the calcium phosphate. The two goes with the sodium phosphate. And even I can do this one without punching it into my calculator. Got it? Three sig figs. Infinite number sig figs. Three sig figs. Not too shabby. Okay, let's try the next one. How many moles of sodium chloride will form if 6.90 moles of the sodium phosphate reacts with an excess calcium chloride? So what does that mean? That's yeah, pretty simple. All that means is we know that we have so much calcium chloride that we know for certain that all 6.90 moles of the sodium phosphate will react. So we'll make as much of the sodium chloride as we can from exactly this many moles of sodium phosphate. We still go with the one number in the problem with its units and its label. Now we're going to compare NaCl with Na3PO4. So the sodium phosphate has to cancel out with the sodium phosphate moles. And they want to know moles of sodium chloride. So that has to go on top. You can see how simple this is. You just follow along what it tells you. So, 6.9 times 6 divided by 2. My calculator says 20.7 and since this first number had three sig figs this last number has three sig figs so 20.7 moles of sodium chloride will form okay final problem 1.11 times 10 to the minus third moles uh, what moles of the NaCl? So this time we're comparing product with product, but it's still nothing more than a mole to mole ratio. You just have to know what has to go in the denominator and the numerator to cancel out the units to get what you want. And since what you want is the calcium phosphate moles, that has to go on top. That ratio is 1 to 6. Everything cancels except what I want. 3 sig figs again. Infinite number of sig figs, so the answer has 3. And whatever 1.11 times 10 to the minus 3rd divided by 6 is. One point eight five times ten to the minus fourth moles. Be ready because every single stoichiometry problem where we have reactants and products, at some point you're going to get to the mole to mole ratio of the balanced equation every time. That's the key to these kinds of problems. So be ready for it. All right. Try some from exercise 7E. Shouldn't be too much of a problem for you.